Okay. Well, I'm excited to do this. I, I got to pick from the list of things. And the topic that I am going to be leading us through, instructing, and then uh, trying to get some action going on is uh, something that has been a passion of mine since I first became a believer. We are looking at inner healing. When I, when I cried out to God and said, come and get me, I'm a mess, and not doing very good at running my life, even though I'm trying to be perfect, um, I had no concept of my sinfulness. I didn't I really rebelled against the thought that I was not a good person. But I was a needy person, and that is how I approached the Lord, and, and he met me, and he received me. And uh, after I allowed him to be Lord of my life, he began to reveal to me where I was falling short, <laughs> a lot of falling short. And uh, I was reading through the scriptures, and in Romans... Romans 7, Paul, the great Paul, who turned from Saul to Paul, was saying, as Paul, like, what am I going to do? Uh, the, you know, the, the, the evil that I don't want to do, I'm doing. And, and I know the good, but I just mm, can't seem to get there. Like, what was me? Like, what is going to go on? And I really, really identified with Paul's cry. We have the best of intentions, but we fall short over and over again. We disappoint ourselves. We know we don't live up to where we're aiming. So that brought me face to face with the brokenness that I have in me. And my prayer began to be, Lord God, make me whole. Make me whole. I had an image this morning while I'm sitting there. I don't know. I was like, like whole as in the W-H, not whole as in Swiss cheese. I related to being like Swiss cheese. So if you poked me, you either got something really good or you got something really bad. It's like your air or food. And I didn't want to be Swiss cheese anymore. I wanted to be like a really beautifully aged cheddar, solid and consistent all the way through, okay? Lord, make me whole. Not like Czech, not like Swiss, although I do like Swiss. I just don't want to be Swiss. Cheese. Okay. So this, this adventure of inner healing, of coming to the point where things are addressed, has been something that really excites me, something I've seen the Lord work in my life. And I want all of us to come into a realm where we understand and we commit to the process of allowing the Lord to bring us from our brokenness to wholeness. We are broken because of wounds. And some of the deepest wounds we have come from the earliest times in our life. But we, in this world, will constantly be encountering situations where we are wounded, wounded by family, friends, disappointed by the world in general. Um, those that are closest to us can sometimes rip the biggest holes, tear them deeply. And where God has created us to love and be loved and, and not to experience these betrayals and sufferings and rejections. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden were created to enjoy whole fellowship with the Lord God. And we have been brought into a realm now where this is not the case. The wounds in our hearts can be so profound and deep. They can be so hidden in ways that, that not even time heals them. Ignoring them, burying them, scabbing them over, renaming them, does not bring us into freedom. They are so deeply rooted, and the Bible does talk about the roots, that people don't know how to break free. I mean, it, it, it damages us to break free when the, when the roots are so deep and intertwined, intertwined with, with so much of us. <sighs> that, um, yeah, sometimes these are our buried memories because they are so deep, and, and they might even feel like the very fabric of our being 
But the Lord God has a magnifying glass that can reveal what is us and what is not and bring us into wholeness. So we're going to pursue that. I want to start by understanding, having just a, a brief summary of understanding our, our nature, how we're made up. So we are aware that a human being is spirit, that at the time of our conversion, our spirit is lifed by the spirit of God, and our spirit communes with the spirit of God. That's our God connection, our spirit. Talk spirit to spirit with the Lord, and our spirit now can when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, because our spirit is lifed. Our spirit, our soul, and our body. So three parts, spirit, soul, and body. But the soul, and yeah, we understand body, I don't have to explain that too much, okay? Okay. Our soul is, our, is also, can be seen in three ways, as our mind, our emotions, and our will. Our soul is kind of what we identify as being our uniqueness, our us. So our mind makes us aware of the world around us. Our mind is what works to receive the senses that come, you know, the five senses that, that come in, and our mind registers all of that and processes, puts the information together. Um, our emotions are our personal reaction to everything around us. They're what colors our life, our joy, our sadness. It's, it's our evaluation, I guess, of what's going on. It's a good thing, a bad thing, a threatening thing, a happy thing. However, when our emotions are negatively affected, this can cause our greatest pain. Our emotions have tremendous power, our greatest joy. Our will, so we're doing mind, emotions, and will. Our will is what determines our actions and has the last word. It's our active bit. For example, when a person hears the word of God, the message arrives first to their mind, where the information is processed. And then it passes to their feelings, where it can be met by a variety of different responses, um, acceptance, rejection. As a child, when I heard the gospel, you are a sinner and you must be saved and Jesus made the way, I knew the information. But my emotions said, oh no, you can't call me a bad person. And I rejected action. Because my emotions ro rose up. Don't touch me. But when these things pass to feelings, we do have different results or different responses. Later in my life, I was able to make a decision where I went, yes, I see the point, and I am not. I'm needy. I need what you've done, Christ, and I accept it. Take care of me. I was able to surrender the emotions and then the act of the will. We are able to make right or wrong decisions. Because God respects the will of a person so much that he never interferes with the decision we make. Um, in his mercy, he offers us many opportunities through the hard <laughs> roads of life and, and the blessings to come to a new willful decision. And that I thank the Lord that he did with me. He persevered didn't listen to my child's decision. He brought me to a new place where I was able to make a woman's choice and choose life. Because free will is one of God's greatest gifts to us, and it is also one of our greatest challenges. Because God doesn't, you know, we've heard this before, God doesn't want a kingdom of robots. Yes, Lord, I'll do what you say. <laughs> I don't want my children to be lined up in fear of me and I want my children to respond to me in, in love and, and, and out of knowing that, that it's for their best, to be joyful. God's kingdom is a kingdom of free people. The world doesn't see us that way, but those of us that have moved into 
the kingdom of God, understand the freedom we have. We are free to love him and serve him willingly with all our hearts, all our soul, all our strength. So that's how we're made, our mind, our emotions, our will. So how does this relate to inner healing? Okay. What causes the wounds in our hearts? Um, I'm going to have a little look at that. I have no idea what page you guys are on, but there should be a... Okay. What causes the wounds in our hearts? Well, this broken down old world is not short on <laughs> ways to supply that. Even our pre-birth experiences. We come into this world conceived in iniquity. These pre-birth experiences, the history of our family. Some of our wounds are generated even before we have an awareness of speech or thought because we are taking in right from the moment our, of our conception and if our parents are in turmoil, if there is difficulty in that period in our life, if there is a history in our family, these are unseen spiritual things that come, well, they're the iniquity package that, that since, mm -hmm, generational. So yes, yeah, some of these things, yeah, well, none of these things we're really in control of, but to be aware that pre-birth, Everything our parents have experienced, the lineage, the descendancy, will have an impact on us for the good and for the bad. And there are wounds there. For years and years, every time I did, uh, I've done some, I've done two really thorough um, healing and, and extensive um, examinations of my life, prayerfully, one with Rev Bev and Papa Tony, and another time. Um, and every time I do the, the massive questionnaires, they say birth trauma, and I go, no, 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 uh, until a couple of years back. And the Lord showed me that there was a problem I was having um, that was related to something I didn't know. Well, I did know, but I didn't know. I'd never connected at my birth. Okay? These experiences affect us. And when we have reactions or we act in ways that feel not, well, might be totally in character, but because we've done it so often, it's time to examine and go, is there something, Lord, that you can reveal me, re reveal, reveal to me? So there are some of these things that might be a little hidden, need the Lord's revelation. He showed me when I was having trouble, Dealing with, I'll, I'll go into a little detail. Do I have time for a little detail? Was the, when asked to do something I didn't think I could do, I would have total meltdown freakouts. You don't have to elaborate, David. But I would lose it. <laughs> I would lose it to, to the, yeah, like, like sore throat from what I was doing kind of stage, okay? And, and usually, but, but these the situations just, just, psh, and when I went to the Lord in prayer, he said, well, remember the bump on your head. Well, it's not a bump, it's a hole. I go, well, that's weird. But yes, it's there. I've known it's been there. It's a little dip in my... And when I was a child, I asked my mom, how come I've got this? And she said, well, when I was in labor, they left me all alone. You were my first baby. I didn't know you weren't supposed to push the whole time. And you were born with a big egg-sized bump on the top of your head. So all of my, my first experience in life was being pushed into something I couldn't do. And it was, it was appropriate to feel like a flip out of, of I'm between life and death. So, you know, if you ask me to mail a letter that I don't feel I'm able to, why I would feel like it was a life and death issue was explained by that. Okay. So allow the Lord to uncover Look at these times and don't just blame everyone else because he asked me to do something totally unreasonable that I couldn't do. My reaction was not about him or what I was asked to do. My reaction was something that was tied into my unspoken. 
once I saw that, confessed, much better sailing. Not perfect, but we're getting there. Wounds of the heart can be many of them in childhood experiences, um, lack of family, affection, support, an absence of love, encouragement, or recognition. Um, then we've got the whole schoolyard thing, which starts younger and younger these days. The preschool thing, the schoolyard thing. Are you part of the group? Are you not? Do you see all these th words that are spoken by friends and strangers? Wounds come in society when you don't feel you fit in, where you're the odd one out. All kinds of experiences throughout life. Key ones in the family, but I think school, your social, your early years. We can look at all those venues. And what we tend to do as resourceful, creative, intelligent human beings is we do our best to fill these voids, these little Swiss cheese holes, with whatever seems to work. We fill them with our activities. We fill them with we fill them with legitimate and illegitimate things to alleviate the emptiness and the pain that is there. Um, if we go into marriage hoping that the other person's going to fix us, that's one, yeah, or early, early on, um, yeah. This, this only brings you into, yeah. Uh, I had a few friends in university that, that rushed into marriage because it was, well, I don't have one girl. Well, my mom and my dad abandoned me and Marco just seemed to be a nice guy and it actually was, I shouldn't really use his real name, should I? But that was his real name. He was just there and handy, so it didn't last. And it, it was, you know, filling your life with something, but it only deepens the pain. It only, uh, everything, every experience we live through is stored in our brains. We have neural pathways. And when wounds are repeated and repeated, or we rescue ourselves from our wounds, which is only temporary rescue, we establish neural pathways. So whenever we think or act, these small impulses of electricity literally pass through the cells in our brains. And this forms pathways that work like electrical wires along which the impulses travel. That's rather crude, but we can think of it that way. I know the scientists know all the better, but anyway, we can think of it like ruts in a road. Uh, and everything that w happens in our lives produces these pathways. We get to, I guess because we're lazy and we don't want to mentally, it all just goes the same way. So the more experience, it more, the more an experience is repeated, the more marked the pathway becomes. So as a result, if you were a person who was undervalued or rejected, abused, mistreated in your childhood, these, when you become an adult, these pathways, these ways of thinking about yourself become the same ones that you travel and interpret things through in your adult life. And you would be, well, in, in the words that I used earlier, you, you would probably be one that would be suf suffering from thoughts of condemnation and defeat. Convinced that these thoughts were the truth and from God. I met one man who just said, oh, well, that's just how the so-and-sos are treated. Oh, that's just how life goes for the so-and-sos. I mean, you know, I'm a so-and-so, so I get a so-and-so share of life. He was convinced that he was born into an impoverishment of blessings because that's what his mother said every time there was a disappointment. Oh, well, that's just because we're so-and-sos. This became a pathway that had to be blown up. Okay, I guess there is some good use for landmines in our brains. Blow up these paths that <laughs> take us down the, okay. 
So any kind of abuse a human being suffers, even from the womb, whether verbal, physical, sexual, or social, will affect their lives. Wounds are open doors through which Satan enters to gain control over people. If we do not treat a wound and allow it to heal, infection sets in. And I think Satan is like an infection. He will come in and he will putridize our wounds. The enemy does this by introducing impure and evil spirits into people. Fear, insecurity, feelings of inferiority, doubt, resentment, addictions, depression, I'll let envy because, you know, and through the bitterness and pain, through the bitterness and pain, he introduces these things through the bitterness and pain of past experiences. So, the strategy of the devil is to go unnoticed as he plants these seeds of infection. We can have um, abscesses grow in our bodies. That's infection that's deep underneath. The surface can look just fine for a while till it becomes red and swollen. And but the infection is really underneath. And just as in our bodies, our soul may look fine on the outside, but if there's inside, there are abscesses and, and pustules. And as long as these remain hidden and undetected, they can control our lives. We've got this hidden thing going on. However, Satan loses all his power once he is revealed. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going to lance that boil. <laughs> Which isn't necessary. Do you know what I mean by lancing a boil? It's when, when, a, when, a, um, when a boil, when a pustule comes to the surface, the pressure needs to be released. Yeah. And it can be um, spontaneous, or you can have a sterile, medical... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's not the only way. But when we approach, you know, inner healing in our lives, and especially when we are ministering to others, be aware that God heals in many, many ways. And sometimes there is, there is a time where you go, Okay, one of the ways that we can be wounded that is very, very common, and I'm going to address a little more detail, is rejection. Um, yeah. Rejection is the absence of acceptance. It means not being received. It means being contradicted in what you say, propose, or offer. Rejection is not fitting in or finding place in a group. Mm. You know, I did not receive that in my family home, but I did in school. And, and to know the impact that had in my early years and throughout my life because of that, that time, um, to, to translate back and, and go to those that were rejected in their, their home environment among those that really should be there supporting them, can bring incredibly deep wounds. So the most common cause of a wounded heart is rejection. It comes from a lack of love. When a, parent, when a child is born, their parents should be there to fill their life with love and affection. Uh, there have been tragic instances of children raised in orphanages. Um, I remember in my early raising children years, some of the children at my daughter's school had been Romanian orphans. They were brought from Romania, the orphanages that were there, and these children had not been touched or talked to or held except to be fed and changed. And that was it. They were left on their own. And the difficulties these children had in then receiving love when they were brought into families that did love them. The delays that they had mentally and socially um, were, were obviously apparent. 
And there were difficulties in the schoolyard with aggressive behavior, violence, rebellion, um, and particularly um, indiscriminate familiarity, uh, inability to discern true affection. And they were sad little people. So it's a vital thing. God has, was pleased to establish love at the heart of family. Yeah. So that is one area we're going to really focus on. Now, let's get to some positive stuff going on because there is hope and this cry in my heart that, Lord, you would make me whole. I've learned over the years and I will continue to learn deeper and deeper levels of what is necessary to move from my brokenness to my wholeness. And we need to follow um, and keep things in mind so God can bring restoration to every wounded heart. Okay, we're just going to pray peace over this room. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are doing your work with Eva. That your peace will surround him and that you will bring him into a place of your wholeness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we are going to ask that the Lord will continue to work in us. Amen. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is identify Identify your wound and ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to bring a revelation of the things that we are unaware, of the things that we do not realize that are relevant, of the things that we do realize, bring them into focus so we can address the underlying issue and the cause for our brokenness, the root of it. In this process, we need to confront our past. And with Jesus' help, face anything that has affected us in the past. Because we know that his love is the medicine that we need for every wound. He knows the right diagnosis. Trust him that he is not going to bring forth a wound, uncover it. He's not ready to minister to and have the power to bring us from a place of our brokenness to the wholeness that he wants for us. One of my daughters, every time she had a bobo, she'd present it to us, want it fixed, and every time we tried to touch it, she'd pull it away and hide it. <laughs> You've had that happen. So another step in our healing is we need to accept the love of God to be ministered to our wound. Accept it and believe it. Don't turn away from it. Um, oh, we have that one, um, who was it, dipped in the water three times, didn't want to do it. It may seem humbling. It may seem inappropriate. What the Lord brings us to in our healing may seem silly or, or not significant enough or not what we expect. But we need to accept that the love that God has for us will be what we need to fulfill the void. Receive his love. Receive his love and allow it to bring us wholeness, to bring us work. So it's three steps. I don't know why that was page six, because now we're going to remembering that we can trust him because God knows what we've gone through. Jesus Christ became man that he would know what we are going through. Because of his love for us, Jesus emptied himself and became a man. And well, a man, he suffered all the different types of rejection that we face throughout his life. He was rejected even before he was born. Joseph wanted to abandon Jesus and Mary. He was on his way to abandon them. But God miraculously intervened. He had a dream. In Matthew 1, it is reported that God intervened and Joseph did not turn his back on Mary and Jesus. But that was there. Jesus was also rejected shortly after his birth by a king so frightened when he heard of Jesus' royal lineage that he had all the children murdered in Bethlehem. And 
God once again divinely intervened, and he had the family flee to Egypt. Jesus was rejected by the Jews, his own people, turned their back on him and called for him to be crucified. He was rejected and challenged throughout his whole ministry as well. Jesus was rejected by his own disciples, those closest with him, who walked and talked, who spent days on the dusty path with him. They fled in fear when they saw he was arrested and put on trial. One betrayed him, sold him. The other denied him. And this all happened that the scriptures would be fulfilled. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. That's in Zechariah. Jesus was rejected even while on the cross. One of the thieves who was about to die spoke cynically to him, scorning and rejecting him moments before his death. And he was ultimately rejected by his heavenly father. The moment of greatest pain, his greatest pain, when his own father turned his back on him and abandoned him. And the pain that he felt when the Father God turned his back on him brought forth the most heart-wrenching cry of agony. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The psalmist that recorded that years before must have been transformed in time to the cross that he would know that the pain of Christ's suffering and he continued in that psalm though he goes yet you are holy Lord God and this concept is so important when it comes to inner healing we need to understand that even when everyone turns their back on us God has the right response for us and the right response to us Jesus was abandoned by the Father because he was taking our place. He carried our sins upon his shoulders so that the price would be paid, that we would be able to be holy and stand before God without sin. Jesus became sin for us so that you and I might become righteous, become the righteousness of God. He suffered so that we might be healed. Psalm 22, in you our ancestors put their trust, they trusted, and you delivered them. And in Christ, we can put our trust. He will deliver us. Put our trust in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Now, one of the things that helped me through my early years when I had schoolyard problems was understanding that in my family gave me this, that I was born with a purpose. And this is true of you too. Psalm 22, 9. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. You are not a mistake. Every person is planned by God. Thank you, Lord. We compare ourselves to other people and come to a wrong conclusion, but this is the word of God. You are not a mistake. Your being was planned by God. He is a paternal and maternal God who can fill any emotional void caused by the abandonment of a parent. He will be a father to the fatherless. God has always been our God and Father. Psalm 22:10, From my mother's womb, you have been my God. God is not only our God now. We may have come to know him now, but he has always been our God. He is from ever to now. Well, time is his creation. He sees all of time. From our mother's womb, God placed his seal upon us, and today he is saying, you are my child, and I am your God. 
Therefore, we know that he is our true God and Father. And he wants to comfort us. Isaiah 66. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandied on her knee. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You will be comforted over Jerusalem. God wants to bring us the comfort and security. Just as a mother, that's why I say it's maternal and paternal, just as a mother comforts her child. Fathers also comfort their children. I'm not excluding anybody here. I, it's, it's, it's in the all-inclusive parenting. Yeah? And God wants to be father and mother to us. Do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. If your earthly father has failed you, do not pattern Father God after. This is a difficult leap for many people, but God can bring you through. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, your brother, will bring you through. And Psalms 27.10, Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. The real process of inner healing begins with facing our brokenness and no longer hiding it. God wants to take the place of our father and mother, give us the courage to face these difficult and painful occurrences in our lives. And when you see this and you have the courage to face what is being brought up, what has wounded you, and the Holy Spirit comes alongside and can apply his healing spirit and medicine to your soul. He can remove the infection that the enemy has tried to encourage. When the process of healing begins, you should be able to see fruit immediately. Peace is one of my favorite fruits. <laughs> Okay, so steps towards restoration. Inner healing, we need to learn, we need to exercise our Christ-given right and ability to forgive. Forgiveness is the key. Forgive with all your heart those who have offended you. Because forgiveness is not an emotion it is a personal decision. It is a step of the will. It is a decision to cancel out the note of debt towards another person. Sometimes people say things like it's to overlook it, but it isn't to overlook it. It's to look right at it and say, transfer it to a higher authority. This is not a debt that I will be demanding payment for, Lord God, you take care of it. I forgive. Forgiveness is the beginning of restoration, and we must forgive those who have left the deepest wounds in our hearts. And because it is a decision, it will be tested, and you will have to say, no, my decision was forgive. And then you go, oh, but I thought I'd feel like I, but no. Test and forgive. It is a choice. I no longer demand payment for this. Mark eleven twenty five. Whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive you your transgressions. Forgiveness is the key. Renounce everything that has produced bitterness, resentment, hatred, and rebellion. Okay, remember those neural pathways? Okay. When you're on the, when you're, yeah, but they shouldn't, you did, when that, those thoughts come, you're forgiven and it comes, you go, no. I've renounced that. 
That's your spiritual warfare, to stand and say, Satan, don't remind me of that. God doesn't even remember it. It's, shh. okay, so renounce. Our hearts are our greatest treasure. We must not guard wrong feelings or memories that divert us from the paths of God. If these thoughts or feelings are taking us away from the path God has set, the one we know, resist and remind the enemy that is forgiven, covered, and move on. That is renouncing. Spring clean your heart and remove the old. Where are we? Keep only those things that are the new edifying word of God. And I think when we renounce and we see these bitter things, don't just push them away. Fill that space with the word of God and the truth. So steps towards restoration. Forgive. Renounce the patterns, the paths that have brought us all this pain, these wrong feelings as the Lord has shown them to you as being wrong, ungodly thoughts. And do the, you have to keep, you know, in a wound, you have to keep taking off the bandage and recleaning and redressing. We need to move in healing through these experiences in our life. It's going to be a process. It's, you know, sometimes... You know, lets the boil pop, everything's great. But other wounds are so deep and so profound that they take the time. And we need to be good and diligent to allow the Lord to remind us, ah, time for, take the Band-Aid off, give it a good wash, apply the healing oil of the Holy Spirit, and repeat. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. <laughs> now, there's another step here. Um, and it's part of the spiritual warfare. These things take time. They're not instantaneous. So we need to constantly remember to forgive and accept yourself. Because we get into these pathways of repeating the sinful, I mean, you can look over your shoulder and go, oh, you know, I was my own worst enemy. It was all my I, I. But don't allow your thoughts to accuse you or your mistakes in the past to condemn you. Behold, you are new. Yes, these wounds, but resist. Because 2 Corinthians 5.17 reminds us, you can repeat this to yourself. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. And Romans 8, 1, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, I am now more aware of things, but I am not necessarily condemned of these things, nor do they drag me down. In Christ Jesus, when these things are revealed, I can have the courage to face them and say, Lord, make me whole. I see this. And your Holy Spirit, Spirit sees it. And yes, I see it. I repent. Allow me to turn. Give me the, the will and the ability. Show me your ways. And four, we need to restore our personal relationship with God. You know, our temptation in times when we feel ashamed or condemned is to run and hide. How many times have I found children that did naughty things hiding behind the sofa? <laughs> and that's, this is, you know, follies tied up in the heart of a child. But yeah, I relate with my little person that wanted to hide when I did something wrong. Hmm? A vivid memory of hiding once. <laughs> I was so ashamed. But when I did go to my parents, it wasn't what I feared. They received me. They cared for me. They fixed my wound. Restore your personal relationship with God. Because Jesus said in Matthew 11, probably said it way more times than he wrote it down. Matthew did it. Come to me, all you who are wearied and burdened, and you will find your rest for your souls. You will find rest for your souls. Lord God, his arms are open. We may want to run, but 
Encourage your relationship with the Lord that you can come back to Christ with all your heart because this is an essential step in our healing. We must go to the healer. Oh, dear. All I wrote down was conclusion. <sighs> How are we doing, David? Help me with my timing. Okay. Okay. All righty. So this is a very interesting experience. I'm working with notes that I did not originate, so it's, um, I'm learning. I also have to be merciful with myself as I'm learning. Pursuing wholeness. Okay, thank you, David. Okay. Holy Spirit. Sweet and persistent Holy Spirit. Let's just um, ask him. We've looked at different things. We've looked at the steps of restoration. My poked at you by talking about childhood and all these things. I want to ask Holy Spirit that you would minister to each individual in this room. Open the eyes of their hearts that they would identify any causes of wounds in their lives. Lord, we trust you now that you will only uncover what you are ready and able to address in us. You know, if you want to catch the thoughts as they come by, you can write them down in your journals. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. We've talked of family issues, parents, or perhaps, <laughs> most likely, <laughs> siblings. We have larger circles of life, aunts and uncles, those that had influence in your early life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know some of us have been through this process before. It could be something that's much more recent. Well, stuff you didn't remember last time, yeah. Because even little cuts and scrapes can fester and become ugly. So even little bumps and bruises can cause swelling and pain. So I think in our soul, in our bodies, in our spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, something's going like splinters, eh? Ah. Tiny but deep.
Okay. And now be bold, be strong. Write down whether it's initials or the names of the people. Put, put a face, put a name. In those cases, put a name where there's someone that you need to forgive. When you're ready, we're going to do something about this. two pens are still give you just a minute more <sighs> so are we ready to do something about this are we ready to move from broken to whole. Are we ready? Yeah. Let's take it to our Heavenly Father who loves us. Thankful that Jesus Christ has made the way that we can enter in boldly and that the Holy Spirit's present with us now will lead and guide us and enable us to mean what we pray. Okay? You can pray after I've prayed. I'll give you a moment to pray for yourself in your own words. Okay? But this needs to be a personal time. Lord God, we come to you now seeking that you would make us whole. And you would bring us from our brokenness and pain into your holiness and peace. Holy Spirit, enable us now to forgive those who have wounded us, who have rejected us, forsaken us, and brought us pain. We choose to walk in your way now. We choose to forgive these offenses. And Lord, we release all our rights for recompense from these people. And we say, Lord, we trust it to be your business, not ours. Mm-hmm. Forgive. Okay. Um, for the tape, Pastor Dave just said, go through one by one, each of those that you've written down, and say, Lord, I choose to forgive this person for this offense.
Okay. Thank you, Lord. And now, in our woundedness, Lord, we confess that we have allowed bitterness, bitter thoughts to rise up. We have turned to resentment and even hatred and rebellion in our own human effort to deal with these things. And Lord, we see these as destructive and evil in our lives and we renounce our use of these tools in order to survive. We renounce our bitterness towards these people. We renounce our resentment, the hatred and the rebellion that has sprung up from that. Lord, we bring these to you and we ask your forgiveness for, for using these instead of turning to you and surrendering our wounds to your care and trusting you to care for our wounds. So look at what you've written and name those things because they may be other, other of the handy tools that you've used rather than turning to the Lord to deal with these wounds. I like to swim in denial. So, Lord, mm -hmm. for hiding from things instead of facing them. Lord, I repent. <laughs> for renaming things instead of calling them what they are. Yeah. And Lord, I ask in faith that you would open my eyes, that I would see me as you see me. Healed, whole, forgiven. That Lord God, you would enable me to forgive myself and see myself through your eyes that I would be able to walk in your freedom and liberty with the confidence of knowing I can always run back to you. That I can return to you, God, with all my heart. Heal my heart. That I would love you with a whole heart and not a Swiss cheese heart. That I would know you fully, even as you know me so fully. Okay. <laughs> 